Well, I suppose I should explain how we got to this point here, but a lot of you guys have been asking me for when I'm going to be poking around on a computer, as if I have control over that, by the way. But for those of you guys that have been asking about that, today's your lucky day. Uh, much to my dissatisfaction, though, to be honest with you, I would have rather pulled the engine out of this car than the PCM, to be honest with you. But we are going to do some uh, computer, and I'll explain what my thinking is and how I'm doing uh, the exact procedure. But basically, uh, after being unable to trace that ground wire because it runs basically through uh, some metal channels and my tracer doesn't work and I started digging around at stuff and it just occurred to me, you know what, it's going to be easier for me to actually work from the computer on back. We haven't completely ruled out a computer problem with this thing. But uh, I did do some research and there are a couple things. So first of all, I did get this flow chart. I won't mention where it's from, but basically it is a professional diagnostic flow chart, which basically says for a P0139, the procedure is, and I am not making this up, replace the oxygen sensor and then reprogram the PCM. And it goes through the steps on replacing the O2 sensor and reprogramming. So for those of you guys that criticize me because I don't follow the engineer's instructions, um, yeah, you guys are idiots because the idea that this would be the flow chart for diagnosing this problem is ludicrous. It is very obvious it should appear to anybody that any wiring problem, any open in the heater circuits, any short to ground in the heater circuits could cause this problem. And it's not just the oxygen sensor that could cause the problem. Remember, we did have an O2 sensor that was dead, but not the heater circuit. So. It, it's just, anyway, um, but here's the thing. Uh, it did mention about reprogramming the PCM. It did occur to me that maybe there might be some validity there. Not that I believe reprogramming a PCM would do anything. So we did take the car to a Nissan dealer, have them reprogram the PCM, whatever the hell. And of course, after a cost, I think it was of $110, the check engine light came back on with the same code. So... The guy uh, let me have the car for a couple days here to play around with it. I do not believe it's going to be a computer problem, like I said, so the reprogramming wouldn't have worked. Um, but what we're going to do is verify that. Um, they were offering to charge a considerable amount of hourly rate to do the diagnosis. I believe that we're going to be able to do it ourselves. So what we're going to do is I've got this information here. And this is basically a layout of the harness on the ECM. And then I was luckily, and I'm hoping that, that this is accurate. And actually, I did look already before I started the video. And it does appear that, that this is going to be accurate information. Um, that's one of the challenges we had is the wiring diagrams that I've had so far as you can see, left a lot to be desired with accuracy. Uh, this one does seem to be accurate, though. And you can see that what we've got here is each pin, the pins are numbered here, each pin is labeled with exactly what the item is and even some specifications that you would look for there. And so I've outlined the ones that are of interest. Uh, these are front heaters, front oxygen sensor heaters that I've labeled in yellow here. And you can see that we've got the wire colors here, so we'll be able to find them. And basically, these are as positive controls because I know that those O2 sensor heaters are working. Uh, here is for our rear O2 sensors. We only have one, so I imagine one of these is going to be blank in our harness there. And it goes on down the line, and I've outlined uh, even some grounds and things that may be of interest. Um, but... Uh, We'll go ahead and see there's another front O2 sensor. That's going to be for our signal. You can see that we would actually see the oscillation traces from the PCM. And of course, there's more for the rear sensor. So that's the information we're going to go off of. Let's go ahead and see if we can make sense of it at the computer. All right, so my first strategy is to make things as easy as possible by making sense out of the spaghetti. So um, I've marked off my regions of interest here. And uh, let's see, so numbers two and three I've got marked off because those are going to be good positive controls uh, to look at by comparison my rear O2 sensor. So let's see here, we need number 
So we need either number two or three. It won't matter. So let's go ahead and uh, actually I can see number two right here because it's a red with a purple or red with a blue, I mean. So we've got red with blue and that is definitely in position number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that with a piece of tape so that I can easily target it. And basically this is going to be our positive control so we can see what a good control from the computer looks like. So I'm going to mark that number two. Okay, and then um, we also got number three next to it if we need. And then we go to numbers four and five. And numbers four and five, those are going to be... Um, well, we can't have a four and five because it's rear oxygen sensor uh, ground and... Um, incidentally, pointing out that the, there is obviously a ground control in this computer, so my wiring diagram again was incorrect uh, that I got earlier that showed that there was power control. Um, clearly that is from the ground, but what we're going to do is pay attention here because we can't have numbers four and five because we only have one rear oxygen sensor and um, my guess is this diagram is going to be for a California model, I suppose. And um, actually, there is a blank right there next to number three. So number four is open. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my sheet so it's easy to remember. And then let me also mark it uh, up here. Okay, so what we're looking for is number five, and number five is going to be, my bet, is going to be our region of interest here. So let's see, we need to find number five. That would be right next to the blank space, wouldn't it? So let's see, there is our um, red and blue and orange, blue, uh, OB, O, OBO, OBOBO, my jungle love. And this will be it right here. Okay, so we got pink and black. So we should have PB. And we do, number five, PB. So this is critical. This is going to be this, this wire that I believe that I've been trying to find. So let's definitely mark him up. Okay, so we've got... Um, pretty much a good control and a and our variable here. All right, so let's look and see what else we might have of interest here. We've got a bunch of grounds here. I'm only interested in that if we find a problem with the grounding at the computer. Um, and then we also have, uh, well, of course, we've got the signals from the O2 sensor. I'm not worried about that. We saw from the scan tool after I grounded out the heater manually that that's not an issue, so there's no reason to look at any of those. So I believe, actually, we've got enough to go on here. So I think a good place to start is, let me go ahead and set up my power probe signal wire tracker and see if we can pick up this wire. If we can, uh, that's, that's going to not be really good news, actually, um, if we pick that up, because that's going to be indication this computer might have a problem and we'll have to check on that. If I don't find any signal here uh, from sending a feed through the oxygen sensor harness, uh, then that means that that wire is going to be open. And of course, I, I couldn't find the open, but it may be easier to track backwards from the computer. That was my initial strategy. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we wanted that, uh, what was it, red with blue there. So yeah, that is our wire that corresponds to number five up there. So let's go ahead and set our signal tracker in there. And this is actually good news. I cannot pick up that signal at all here. And let's see, yeah, as far back as I can check, um, I'm not exactly sure. And that, that sound was actually just it turning off because of lack of activity. So there is no signal there. Now we do have a positive control here with this number two. So what we're going to do is this. All right, this right here will be that same control wire for a front oxygen sensor. And now let's see if we can pick up the signal. And you can see we can pick up our signal very easily there. So this is confirmed that uh, this 
uh, ground control wire here is open uh, before hitting the computer. Now we still have to determine that we don't have also a bad computer, but that's, that's pretty much enough for me there. But we came this far, so let's go ahead and be thorough. So what I want to do is verify that we do have the computer working. So what I want to do now is I want to verify that we do have control from the computer. I actually want to get the car running for this because one of the control factors is the O2 sensor heater is going to turn off at wide open throttle. And I want to, uh, and that's going to be determined by RPM actually. So what I want to do is start with a positive control. So let's go to our known good sensor here. And um, obviously, if these are good, we should have ground. And actually, to make it easy, instead of using my multimeter, I can use my power probe, um, my uh, signal tracker for that. So uh, let me go ahead and set that up. All right, this should make it easier because now we've got an audio signal. But basically, when I touch a ground, we're going to hear a sound and that'll actually make things quite a bit easier. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let me go ahead, I want to get these oxygen sensors started up here. Okay, and then uh, let's go to our known good oxygen sensor control here. That was number two and that's easy to find with my tape right there. Okay, and we can see that it is grounding out. So it is doing control there. This is our number five, so that's our questionable one. And uh, if, if this doesn't ground out, then, um, well, that's going to be bad news. That means that somehow this, this computer got fried. Uh, but if it grounds out, that's going to be good news. So let's see, we've got our space there. So let's go ahead and, okay, it is grounding out. Okay, so now I want to do just two more tests. Uh, let me go back over here to our known good. And what I'm going to do is increase the RPM to 3500 and that should turn off the heater if there is control from the computer. And this is on the good sensor, the one that, uh, a front sensor that we know is good. Okay, so we can see that it has good control. Now let's try it on our questionable sensor. Okay, and that would be here. And then let's see if this works. Okay, we can see that we've got computer control. Okay, so what this tells us is that this computer works. This computer is working. We just simply do not have wiring integrity. We have an open on this number five for our rear sensor somewhere between the computer and, uh, and the oxygen sensor uh, at the rear. Okay, and then let me go ahead and unplug the oxygen sensor from under the vehicle. All right, and we are going to send a signal through this wire number five. Okay, let's set our sensitivity there. So that should do good. Okay, so we can see we can pick up our wire there. And we still pick it up in that harness. And let's go back here. We still pick it up there. And then it gets a little harder to reach. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. And I'll come back when I find wherever this open is. Right there. It dies. So I believe we're going to find our open right there. Kind of an unusual location, I suppose. Now this is a thick harness here, so I want to make sure that we run along all sides of the harness just in case the wire wraps around and it goes out of range. But um, yeah, anywhere I put the probe right there, looks like we've got an open. So let's go ahead and open up that harness and see what we got. All right, just finishing up our little wiring repair here. It was actually right in the bend uh, where, it, where it came in to the main wire stream here. And that's a pretty common location, I find, for these things to have those issues. But uh, let's go ahead and check real quick here that our repair is good. So I'm going to get my tracker, and we can see we now pick up the wire. And we still track it all the way up the wire harness here. 
All right, so that should be a fix now on that oxygen sensor heater circuit. So now let's go up to the scan tool and make sure that we have oxygen sensor activity on the rear sensor without having to short the heater circuit to a ground nearby. It should do it on its own now. All right, back to the scan tool now. Again, we do not have the heater circuit grounded out. Uh, so hopefully the repair holds up. Let's pull up the positive control here. That'll be our front O2 sensor, and obviously we're in closed loop and oscillating. Okay, let's see, and then we want to go here to O2 sensor 2 bank 1, and this time it should be reacting. All right, All right. most certainly it does appear that this thing is going to need a catalytic converter by this data here. So let's go ahead and add propane. There it is. And you can see that our sensor is alive and well on its own. So that is a fix. All right, well, I'm not gonna lie. That one was a little bit trickier than usual. Kind of got thrown a curveball with the two problems on the oxygen sensor circuit there. The best way to handle that is when you suspect you're having two problems like that, just take care of one at a time. Try to take care of the easiest one first. Sometimes that will take care of the second problem. As you can see in this case, it didn't and we knew it wouldn't. But just take them sequentially one at a time and that's the best way to approach it. So uh, yeah, kind of a tricky one here today. But anyway, we're good to go on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and return it to the owner and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful.